Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Legally Earned America right here on Fox 29. Last week's show was pretty interesting. We had 10 questions that we submitted to all seven candidates of the 3rd Congressional District for Congress, and we received answers from five of them. One of them referred us to their website, and the last one didn't respond at all after several attempts, equal attempts. Anyone that we had trouble uh, attempting to get in contact with, we found other means to try to reach them and to no avail. Uh, Larry Rader never even responded to us. Very disrespectful. Uh, Mimi Methvin sent us to her website, did not have the time to answer our 10 questions. So she just said, go get whatever answers you want from my website. So we did, and it was helpful. It pretty much told me that those two were ones that we did not need to vote for. Um, I don't like to tell you who to vote for, but I'm quick to say who not to vote for. And those two people have no business representing South Louisiana, the sportsman's paradise in Washington, D.C. With all of the things going on, the potential gun legislation, especially if the Democrats take the House back. Let's get right into the show. I'll pop in a couple times and give you my thoughts on it, but let's kick it off right now. Here's questions six through 10 of the 10 questions that I sent, the pro-Second Amendment questions that I sent to all seven members of the 3rd Congressional District who are running for that seat in Congress. Do you believe a law-abiding citizen should be able to give or sell a gun to a friend or family member without filling out a federal form? Okay, this is an interesting one because when you buy a gun, if it's from a federal firearms licensed dealer, I don't care if it's a used gun or a brand new gun, you will fill out a background check, a 4473. You will fill one out. I don't care the condition of the gun, what it is, you're going to fill one out. Now, if I want to give one to my son or if I want to sell one to my brother, a lot of the Democrats, when you hear them say universal background checks, what they're talking about is outlawing private sales and giving people guns. So I would not be able to give my gun to my son as inheritance. He would have to do a background check in order to get the guns from me, which also is an additional cost, which to me kind of disenfranchises the poor communities because now they're going to have to be paying money that they don't have, which is going to in turn make them break the law because they're not going to pay that money. So now they're going to get arrested and go to jail. You see the cycle I'm talking about right here? So. That's going to make a lot of felons, because I'm sure it's going to be a felony tied to it, out of people that are just normal law-abiding citizens. Um, if I want to sell something to my brother, I, now I have to do a background check. So that's what we're talking about here. That's, they say you know, 95% of, uh, of, of people want background checks. That's exactly right. I'm one of them. I'm, I support a background check, but those same people know that we have background checks. What you're talking about is outlawing private gun sales. You should word it right if you want to get some true numbers. I'm wording it right. Your numbers do this. <laughs> Take that number, that misleading question, and instead of saying, hey, Billy, do you support background checks? Billy's going to go, yeah, I sure do. Part of the 95%. Hey, Billy, do you support outlawing giving a gun to your son if you want to? I don't support that. Oh, dang. There go our numbers. That's why they do it. That's where that number is coming from. That's why that number might be that high. I've yet to see what poll it comes from anyway. And again, I know how it's worded. I know how it's worded. It's worded to be misleading. Here you go again. Go to Washington. Learn how to word things so you can get the answer you want. Rob Anderson answers question number six. Yes, but I also think we have a responsibility to ensure that those transfers are done smartly. I don't think closing the gun show loophole, that's in quotes because that's not an actual thing, is the answer. I'd rather see a state level initiative that enables private sellers to be able to secure a background check from local or state agencies. Okay, so Rob, here you go with your anti-gun stuff. Rob says he believes in your right to be able to do that, but doesn't support you actually doing that. Okay, he wants transfers to be done smartly, so that means that giving a gun to my son who might be inheriting it is not done smartly. So that means that selling a gun to my brother is not done smartly. Okay. And he said he'd rather see state level initiative. Okay, fair enough. My question was saying that uh, giving or selling those guns without a federal form, he's saying state or local form. He's basically saying a state and local form instead of federal. 
I almost agree with you because I know some of these wacko states out there, Louisiana not being one of them, would be okay with having full control over lo local initiatives to prevent people from being able to give guns to their son or sell them to friends or family members. I understand that, and it also is more long, in long, excuse me, in along the lines of what the Constitution is meant for, which is states' rights. However, we are talking about a Second Amendment issue, which is a federal issue. That federal issue is going to supersede any state or local laws. So those local laws really wouldn't be worth the paper they're written on, actually. So that's a kind of a knock against you. This is a gun show, Rob, and that's a knock against you if you still want us to have a background check for private gun sales. Clay Higgins. Clay says yes. Verone Thomas says, uh, let's see, yes. Verone supports that. Aaron Andrus says yes. Josh Guillory. Josh Guillory says yes. I do believe law-abiding citizens should be able to give or sell a gun to another law-abiding citizen without filling out a federal form. Mimi Methvin is not a fan of you giving a gun to a friend or a family member or selling one. <clears throat> Mimi says on her website, I'm going to say a resounding no, she does not want you doing that. Because she says that 95%, here's that 95% number, 95% of Americans, including the majority of the NRA's membership, support effective background checks on every person who buys a gun. And she put every in italics. Not just those who purchase from a licensed dealer. Most Americans agree it should not be easier for a teenager to get a weapon than a driver's license. Yet time and again, politicians beholden to the gun lobby vote against the will of the people. Wah, 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 wah. She's reading this straight from the playbook out of Washington, D.C. She doesn't believe this. What idiot really believes that a teenager can get a gun easier than what? Getting a driver's license? No. You know what? Young people who want to steal a gun to perform a crime are going to steal a gun. This is simply taking the truth and widening it up and throwing it away. Again, that 95% number, this is laughable, including the majority of NRA's membership. You know what it is? It's some wacko liberal up in Portland, Oregon, that's sitting on a street corner that their question simply says, hey, are you a member of the NRA? Yes. Okay. We got an NRA member here. Do you support background checks? Yes. Okay. NRA members now support background checks across the board, including outlawing private gun sales. That's where you guys get your, your answers at. That's where you get these numbers from. If you don't know that, you don't belong in Washington, D.C. Larry Rader also does not support private gun sales or handing guns down to family members or friends. Next question. Do you believe that passing laws that negatively impact law-abiding Americans will make criminals stop murdering people? Rob Anderson, who is our Democrat, one of our Democrats, says, No, since the dawn of man, humans have found ways to harm others. You are absolutely right, Rob. Clay Higgins? No. Verone Thomas? No. Does not support passing gun laws. Does not think that those gun laws are going to... Let me read the question because I don't want to get it wrong. Verone does not believe that passing gun laws that negatively impact law-abiding Americans will make criminals stop murdering people. Aaron Andrus. Aaron also says no. Josh Guillory says no as well. Mimi does not actually address that directly in her, uh, on her website, but we know that she, uh, she definitely, she, uh, what she's already spelled out on her website uh, would infringe on the rights of honest law-abiding people. She already wants to take your AR-15s from you, so uh, Mimi does support passing restrictive gun laws, and so does Larry for that matter. Larry Rader does as well. Okay, number eight. With over 60% of gun deaths being suicides, do you think guns are the real problem in America? Rob Anderson answers no, but a person in a suicidal state is more likely to follow through on that intent to engage in self-harm when a firearm is present. The only position I have taken that some may consider anti-gun is supporting a three-day waiting period to purchase new firearms. Research has shown that three-day waiting periods are enough to significantly reduce the number of suicides. Okay, again, we need some unbiased research because your research and every town for gun owners that hates guns and the Constitution and all of Bloomberg's groups out there, Gabby Gifford's groups, these are all anti-gun and anti-Constitution groups. It would be just like me putting forth this same study and giving you the answers that I get from all of my friends. It's not fair, it's biased, and it's one-sided. So your research, I don't even, you don't have to post the links because I know it's not an unbiased um, group that put this out there. Yes, that's very anti-gun. Um, a three-day waiting period is extremely anti-gun. 
the Constitution does not say that you should give me, that you, a politician, should give me three days where I can wait to get a gun to make sure that I cool down for whatever reason, suicide or not. You don't infringe upon millions of people because you're worried about thousands of people. I'm sorry, that's tough, that's hard, that's the truth. You don't infringe the majority, the vast majority of a law-abiding people because you're worried about this really, 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 really small percentage of that 1% that might do themselves or somebody else harm. That's not the way the Constitution works. That's not the way this country works. Sorry, bud, but that's it. Clay also agrees that guns are not the problem in America. Clay Higgins, the, one of the Republicans. Veron Thomas says no, that he does not think that's the problem, but says, but still a problem that warrants our attention. I will assume that Veron, is, when he says, that's his words, but still a problem that warrants our attention. I'm assuming he's talking about suicides. So I will give him credit for that. Yes, suicides obviously need attention. You don't curb the desire to kill yourself by outlawing guns. You find what the problem is, why that person decided to kill themselves. They didn't see a gun and decide that that was the wrong color of black, so they want to kill themselves with the gun. The gun didn't make them do it. Finding the problem as to why these people want to kill themselves that's where you find the solution. Not by telling them to use a different tool to kill themselves. Aaron Andrus says also no, he does not think guns are the problem. Josh Guillory says no, he also does not agree that guns are the problem. He says, as our next congressman, I will advocate for a serious focus on addressing mental and behavioral health in our country. It doesn't look like Mimi has an answer for that, but you know she would blame it on guns. So we're gonna say, that she does think guns are the problem because she thinks that. And Larry, you got the same answer. You think guns are the problem also, that you're not gonna effectively look for a proper cure for people who kill, wanna kill themselves. We train every day to be the best and we depend on our gear to do the same because preparedness is only half the battle. That's why we rely on Drago gear to be ready for our mission. Drago Gear, ready for your mission. Find Drago Gear at your local Academy Sports and Outdoors store. Next up, number nine. Do you support gun-free zones and think that they prevent murderers from murdering people? First up is Rob Anderson. Rob, the Democrat, says, no, every school shooting occurs in a gun-free zone. Should high schoolers have handguns on campus? No. But if someone has a CWP, concealed weapons permit, they should be allowed to carry. Good for you, Rob. You got part of that answer right. Um, we'll have to work with you on that too. If you get elected, come see me. Uh, next up is Clay Higgins. Clay says no. He does not think gun-free zones are making America safer. Verone Thomas, one of our Democrats is up next. Verone says yes, I support gun-free zones. No, just that alone won't stop murderers. Then he elaborates a little farther with an interesting little barrage of information. Add smart guns to the scenario, and I see the percentage of gun-free zones, gun violence going down. In a smart gun society, gun-free zones would send out a beacon that smart guns would recognize and automatically disengage until it left the gun-free zone. The only way to switch to a, gun, to a smart gun society is to make ammunition that only works in smart guns. The older gun owners would have to make their own ammunition. A smart gun society would not violate the Second Amendment, which I put in my notes, I highlighted what he said, and I just put LOL after his comment that a smart gun society would not violate the Second Amendment. So you're telling me that now, including people who are poor, who may have been given a gun, handed down to them because they can't afford to buy one, now you're telling them that they can't have that gun? Okay, maybe you're saying they can, we can keep those guns out there. There's only millions of guns out there. But you either grandfather those millions of guns in or you take them. And then you tell everybody now you have to buy your own smart gun, which now just makes a huge black market for those guns that are not smart guns. And you're telling me that you're going to leave it up to somebody you having a D behind your name tells me you're going to leave it up to the federal government to flip that switch, to be in control of that switch that tells you if your gun can work or not. So you're telling me that if I'm in a gun-free zone, my gun will not work. 
what if I'm across the street from a school getting a hamburger and I'm carrying my legal concealed carry weapon on my hip and there's an active shooter in there and the police are 15 minutes away. So my gun gets turned off, right? Think about it, Verone. If you go to Washington, you might need, I don't think it's going to help because you've thought this out, but you might need some help understanding how things work and I'm here to help. Aaron Andrus does not support gun-free zones. A resounding no. Okay, Josh Guillory. I do not want a bunch of kids running around schools with guns. That said, in the event that there is a shooter on campus, I would like someone on campus who is armed and trained with a firearm to protect children in these gun-free zones. Now see, I don't have a yes or no from Josh on that one. He's saying he doesn't want a bunch of kids running around with guns. Who does? Nobody does. No, there's no uh, law-abiding citizen who's ever suggested that. So that's definitely not a suggestion here. Um, and he said, I would like someone on campus who is armed and trained with a firearm to protect children in these gun-free zones. That sounds like he's talking about what they already kind of had, which was the, uh, the school resource officers. Maybe he's talking about teachers also being armed. I'm not sure. There's actually some legislation out there. Louisiana has some state legislation that was being looked at this past year that would allow concealed carry weapons permit holders to actually go onto campuses with a loaded firearm. Um, that's what I support because out of all of you guys going to Washington, D.C., I've probably had more, a more thorough background check through the FBI and the database here in Louisiana, the state police database, than you have. So I'm probably more legitimately legal to have a firearm and to have that kind of security that I carry around with me to protect myself and my family than you are. So I've been vetted already. So I trust me to have a gun on that campus if I need to. If you don't understand the responsibility that a law-abiding gun owner has, then you don't understand the responsibility that a law-abiding gun owner has. You haven't been there yet. When you get there, you'll be educated and you'll understand at that point that we are usually the more responsible people than you guys are. You guys are wanting to go to Washington, D.C. and work. I'm not. <laughs> I'm staying here. I'm staying out of that cesspool. You guys are electing to go there. You want to go there. All seven of you. Mimi Methvin. Well, we know her answer. She does not support gun-free zones, or she does support gun-free zones and does not support arming anybody. Uh, she probably doesn't want the school resource officers there either with guns because it would hurt somebody's feelings. Uh, Larry, same thing. Bam, you got it. Rubber stamp. All right, last one. If elected, will you join with Legally Armed America on our public safety coalition to work towards real efforts to not only identify the real causes of mass killings in America, but to work with parties from all backgrounds and parties, I'm saying in parties also, to identify a solution towards eliminating them? Rob Anderson, one of our Democrats, says, yes, I will support any effort to study violence and reduce the number of violent acts. The only way we can truly affect real meaningful reform is by studying and understanding the underlying causes of gun violence. You're almost right, Rob, because it's not the underlying causes of gun violence. It's the underlying causes of violence. Because, again, when a person decides that they want to go kill 17 people at a school, the gun didn't have anything to do with it. The gun had nothing to do with it. The guns was a means that once your mind was so twisted and warped that you could put yourself into a position to want to kill people, now you started looking for the tool that you need to kill people. You didn't stare, stand there and look at that gun and go, what's it going to be? I'm going to use you to go kill people. No, it's not, it's not like that. It doesn't work like that. You decide you want to kill people. You get into that dark place where you, your mind will allow you to kill people. And then you seek out the tool to do it. That's how it happens. Not rocket science. Clay Higgins says no, that he will not serve on our team to figure out what the real root cause of people killing people is. He says, no, respectfully, Congressman Higgins, again, unless Clay is referring to himself in the third person, somebody's writing this for him. No, respectfully, Congressman Higgins has maintained a policy of not joining alliances or caucuses, keeping the interests of we the people first and foremost. Well, that's funny because that's exactly what we're trying to do. See, by us trying to determine what the real cause is, we can provide facts to all of the Democrats and people who don't believe in we the people if Clay does not want to be a part of that, that's fine, Clay. 
but for everything that we've heard you talk about, it seems like that would be a caucus that you want to be a part of. And you also mentioned that you were uh, one of the co-sponsors of the Hearing Protection Act. Clearly, you belong to some groups out there in Washington, D.C. So is it because we're back here at home that we're not good enough to actually meet with you? I'm not sure what that means. I don't know how I'm supposed to take that, but the fact that you're telling me that you don't want to help me figure out how to save people's lives because you don't belong to any groups sounds kind of hollow to me, Clay. You might need to talk to me. If you win, call me. Verone Thomas says he will serve on our little panel and to try to help us find that. Thank you, Verone. I appreciate that. And Aaron Andrus says yes. Again, Aaron Andrus is our libertarian that he would work with us. Josh Guillory, one of our Republicans, says yes. Thank you for all that you do. We will be calling you up, Josh, and include you in our panel if you win. Mimi, she's not going to serve on our panel. She, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't serve on our panel. I, I know she wouldn't. That could have been the only question she could have answered, but she didn't have the time to answer my 10 questions, so she decided to send me to her website. We know Larry doesn't want to be on our panel. Larry Rader, one of the Democrats also. Guys, that is my compilation of questions and answers from the seven candidates who are running for the third congressional district of Louisiana. I think this is very important. This is a pivotal election here. We have got to maintain the Second Amendment, what it truly stands for, and not allow these people in Washington, D.C., Republican or Democrat, to distort what it truly stands for and interpret it their own way. After all these years that it's been interpreted the proper way, now they want to rewrite it or strip it. Some of these people just are un-American because they do not understand that the Constitution is the basis by which all of our laws are made in this fine country. We cannot allow that. I want you to take these answers from these people, Rob Anderson, Clay Higgins, Verone Thomas, Aaron Andrews, Josh Guillory, and Mimi Meth Methvin, uh, and Larry Rader. I want you to take the questions because I'm not going to try to mislead you guys. When I'm speaking on behalf of Mimi Methvin and Larry Rader, I'm doing so as truthfully as I can. I don't think you should vote for them. I don't think you should because their answers, Mimi's website tells you you don't want to vote for her and Larry's being too scared to answer these questions tells me that he doesn't want to give an answer that's going to cost him a vote in Sportsman's Paradise where we all love guns, the, the, most of the people down here. So I'm not going to tell you who you need to vote for. But I can tell you, based on these answers, you need to figure out who you don't want to vote for. Because some of these people do not belong in Washington, D.C. trying to represent us. And now is not the time to play games. Pick a candidate. You know what? If some of these candidates' answers didn't satisfy you, but you're still on the fence about them, call them. Reach out to their campaigns. If they don't have the time to talk to you, don't vote for them. Do not vote for them, because I can promise you, if they don't have the time to talk to you now, if they get elected, they will not talk to you. So reach out to their campaign. If you get a form letter, throw it away. Call them back. Tell them, I want to talk to the, to the person in charge of this campaign, and you put me in touch with the candidate. I want to speak to the candidate. Call and talk to these people. That's your right to do that. Ask them the hard questions. Don't just rely on these 10 questions and 10 answers that they provided. Call them, ask your own questions, dig down, get deeper, get the information you need to properly do this. Now, this is just in the state of Louisiana, and this is only in southwest Louisiana or south Louisiana. And that's not including the rest of the state. The rest of our friends out there in Louisiana do the same thing. If you'd like to, send me all of your people. Send me all the emails of the people in your area. That goes for the rest of the country. If you want these same 10 questions, I will be happy to post them on our LegallyOwnedAmerica.com website. And you take them and you send them and you tell them, I want 10 answers. All right, guys, that's the 10 questions. That's the 10 answers. As always, I try not to tell you who to vote for because I feel like I need to give you enough information where you can make your own mind up. I know who not to vote for. Larry Rader. Larry Rader does not care. I don't think Larry Rader's taking this this uh, election serious anyway. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not going to spend much time on him. Uh, he didn't spend any on us. Uh, Mimi Mathvin, I think she's the wrong person. Um, she's probably a nice lady. I'm sure she is. She's definitely detached from where we are. I don't know if she's spent too much time outside of this area because she hasn't been in the third district for forever. Um, so maybe she's just detached from how we live our lives and how strong we are and how committed we are to the Second Amendment. That's possible. I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. Nevertheless, she's the wrong person to send to Washington, D.C. 
Um, her website is a true reflection on her uh, ignorance as far as guns go. And I don't need a person who already is anti-gun and ignorant going to Washington and hoping that the right person will change her mind. Because the person who walks into these people's offices on the first day that they're uh, brought into Congress is going to be the likes of Nancy Pelosi. Nancy has already admitted that she hopes some of the small little crumb gun control laws that are out there are a slippery slope. So she's saying she hopes that this is simply a step to the next gun control law that they, they intend to pass. And she doesn't want us to have AR-15s just like Mimi. Mimi's website says she doesn't think we should, us law about it, but instead should have an AR-15. She even goes so far to ignorantly state that they're not used for hunting. So <laughs> this is from a person who just doesn't know. Think about this, guys. That's from the elite. The elite make statements like that because the average guy who works payday to payday and can only afford, let's say, one gun a year, but they need one for self-defense and hunting, AR-15s are used all over the country all the time for self-defense and hunting. There's 8 million of them out there. Is somebody like Mimi and Nancy Pelosi going to look me in the eye and say that 8 million guns out there were bought to murder people? How ignorant is that? Do you really honestly believe that? Do you honestly believe that? That is just a stupid comment to say. These are people who don't know. If you don't hunt with your AR-15, does not mean that a bunch of other people don't hunt with it. There's people that have Corvettes that drive their kids to school. That's not usually the main reason why people buy Corvettes to drive their kids to school, but some do it. I'd like to thank Rob Anderson, Clay Higgins, Aaron Andrus, Josh Guillory, and Verone Thomas for taking time out of their busy campaign schedules to answer and address the questions that I sent. Mimi Methvin, I would like to thank you for sending your email back to me telling me to basically go look somewhere else and get my answers off my website. I don't have time for your 10 questions. At least you responded. Larry Rader, I hope you lose because you're a very inconsiderate person and you do not represent me in any kind of way. Show a little respect. You know, that's all you got to do. I gave you the common courtesy to include you in this whole thing and to follow up and try to get you to be a participant so that you could at least act like you were pro-gun and you just gave me all the information I needed to tell everybody that you're anti-gun. So don't vote for Larry. Um, guys, I appreciate this. You know, Barack Obama once said elections have consequences and boasted about that. They really do. The party in power and whoever is in power makes things happen or they don't make things happen. The problem that we have in our elections these days is that we are very rarely represented, the average everyday guy. And I'm trying to give you guys a voice out there. This little exercise I did with these 10 questions was not for me. Yes, I wanted these answers, but I could have very easily just sent this email uh, question list to each candidate and got their answers. I'm trying to disseminate this information so you guys can make a good decision on who to vote for. You know who I'm telling you not to vote for? I'm not saying who to vote for because I have not honestly made up my mind either. But I wish you all the best of luck. November 6th is election day. Please go out and vote, guys. Please. Because no matter what side you stand on, and I'm saying this from trying to be in the middle, whether you are a Democrat or a Republican or somewhere else in between, it doesn't matter what party you stand for. You have to look at what's right for us, the people.